Oh, uh, let's hey, let's go over clarify real quick. Let's go yeah, over. Let's clarify. Let's clarify the clarify piece. Yes. Yeah. Sure. So, um, I actually want to hear what your thoughts are on it because you know I've been talking about clarify. You know, we've we've been evaluating their solution for about a quarter now, and uh, you know it's basically cloud hosted time series data with a focus on like unlocking potential in that time series data uh, with around collaboration, social collaboration, commenting and notifications. And then also like native, uh, data science tools. Like, so you can open up your time series data in a Python Jupyter notebook real easily and just start doing uh, native data science. So we like it cause it plugs straight into the UNS. In fact, they just released their spark plug B connector and I was working with their uh, founder on that. And like within two days, they already had it updated and released. So, um, yeah, we just like that they're, you know, they're working very quickly and agile and then they have that same mindset, right? There's an alignment of our business values. You know, we're mission driven company. We want to save and create middle-class jobs, you know? And so we, we like partnered, partnered with Clarify. And, uh, I think there's already been like 40 or 50 people that have signed up using the link below. They get like a free Clarify account, special account, just for being a member of the 4.0 solutions community. It doesn't cost you anything extra but it does help support the channel. So check it out. If you haven't already click the link in the description, sign up for clarify, you get 40 free signals of time series data and four free user accounts to basically do whatever you want with, you know, that could be your small data science team or a couple of PLC engineers that want to, you know, start just logging some data to the cloud. Definitely take a look at clarify for that. So, so what, here, are, what are your thoughts? Yeah. So I, I, we talked about this last week, but let me, let, so those, those of you wanted the technical case, you know, why, why should I give uh, clarify a, a shot, right? Um, l let me say this. Let me, the organizations who sponsor our channel um, are only organizations that we allow to sponsor us. So uh, I'm, I've always been very uncomfortable. Like, I, you know, I watch Ben Shapiro's show every day. And, and Ben Shapiro, you'll notice his, his show, like his... If you guys watch him, he it's sponsored by easy VPN. Right. And he always does this commercial in the beginning. And I watch other you know, um, YouTube channels and they they'll they'll do a, a pretty similar thing. Right. They'll have a sponsor of the show. They'll kind of they never talk about like it. I mean, it's, it's sort of a it's an unorganic thing, you know, so when it, it, it's it's almost like whoever we could get to sponsor us, we're going to go ahead and have them sponsor us. You know, and and I'm, I'm not saying that Ben Shapiro is not a values based guy. I'm sure he is. But the um, our approach when it comes to sponsorship is we only want companies that we actually use their stuff and we actually believe in to be a sponsor of the channel. Um, so from a technical perspective, here's why Clarify matters. OK. You know, we did this use case. Uh, we we did a project for a soda manufacturer or so um, in Western Europe last year, and it was a it was a machine learning data science use case. They they hired us. They already had a, a historian. They had two historians. They already had two historians. Um, they had the ignition platform. Um, they had lots of disparate data sources. They were working with Azure IoT. They were using, trying to use time series insights in the cloud. And what they wanted to do, they had a specific machine learning use case, okay? And that machine learning use case was, we want to consume um, historical data across many of our batch processes. I can't remember if these were the mixing tanks. I think they, they may have been. Matt uh, could email me or message me and let me know if I'm right on which part of the process it was, but it was a batch process. What they wanted to do was they wanted to use machine learning. Okay. To inform the operator on, um, speed adjustments on the mixer. Uh, and I think agitation adjustments. So predict that the current set point that you're using for speed and or agitation is going to lead to a bad outcome and make an adjustment. Okay. It took, it took months just to connect, collect the data that they had, normalize the data before the data scientists could ever start working with that data at all. Okay. So there were many, there were many hoops we had to jump through. Okay. 
which were, what we did was we started by connecting to the the historian. I think they were using a Wonderware historian. They may have been using OSI Pi. I can't remember which one it was, but they were using either Wonderware or OSI Pi. They wanted to get the data into Time Series Insights. If you guys have never worked with Azure IoT, this is one of my biggest complaints about TSI, the Time Series Insights solution. If you want to stream data, if you want to use Time Series Insights for Time Series data, and you don't want to go through the Azure IoT Hub, then what you have to do is build like a manual header for each data point. That that is a, it's a custom header that's specific to Azure TSI, and it's a pain in the ass. and And it basically made that solution problematic. I had not been introduced to Clarify before we did this use case, and had we been introduced to Clarify. All of the work that we had done, we would have we would have been able to strip out about sixty percent of the engineering time that we put into just getting the data normalized. That is, and what is normalized data? If I'm pulling data from many different sources, okay, whether those sources are sensors or whether they're time series databases, doesn't matter what it is. If I'm pulling data from many different sources, the first thing I have to do if I want to find patterns in data is I have to normalize it. And I've used this example before. Let's say I've got I want to find a correlation between a, a temperature sensor and a quality calculation. Okay, temperature sensor and a quality calculation. That temperature sensor is changes sixty times per second, and the quality calculation gets calculated every sixty seconds. Okay, so if I want to find a pattern between the two, the first thing I have to do is break up that quality calculation, which gets changed, which gets calculated every sixty seconds into the same number of events that the, the temperature sensor has. So if I look at 60 seconds times 60 minutes is 3,600 events for the, for the uh, um, temperature sensor. I have 3,600 events for the temperature sensor for every, for every one Payload. Uh, quality calculation. No. The normalization of the data is I have to then turn the quality calculation into 3,600 events so that for every temperature calculation I have, I have one quality calculation. That's called Got normalization. It. Got it. Clarify, and these are technical things that we, we don't talk about in this content, the stuff that's on YouTube very often, because our audience is not just technical consumers, okay? The engineers yeah. on here, you know, the Rick Bellatas of the world, the Michael Browns, the um, Mario Ishigawa's, the Dave Schultz's, the the um, the Matt Paris's. There, there are a lot of great engineers who watch the live stream. They understand what I'm talking about right now, right? They get it. 